Hey everyone, Itai Manero here, and in this video I'm going to show you how I did this watercolor portrait in Procreate. So let's jump right into it. For this painting I'm going to be using this beautiful photo reference by Ivan Dodig and the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate, which is available through the link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. First thing, I'm setting up my canvas. If you are curious, I'm going to be working on an 8.5 by 11 inches canvas and I'm also going to import a couple of textures from the ones included in the set. For the paper texture, I'll use the Manero Brushes Canvas Watercolor Paper in Multiply Layer Mode. This layer is going to be on top of everything else for now. Then I import a watercolor texture, specifically the watercolor washes 07B black and white. I'm setting up this layer to overlay mode and make sure to place it right under the paper layer. Below these two layers is where my drawing and painting action is going to happen through the whole painting process. Before we continue, Remember that you can see what brush I'm currently using at all times by looking at this little rectangle right here. All right, before I start to paint, I'm going to make sure to have a good pencil drawing. I personally like my watercolor paintings to show the pencil drawing in the finished piece, so it needs to be correct from the beginning. I'll start by blocking in the main shapes using the wet pencil brush. At first, I don't worry about any specific details, but more about the general shapes. Notice how my shapes are very blocky at this point, almost geometric. I'm trying to get the proportions and the placement of the features right. Drawing with blocky shapes allows me to see more clearly the correct distance and relations between the different elements, like the facial features, the position and angle of the hand, the flowing shapes of the hair, and so on. Only when I'm sure that I have everything in the right place, I will start to refine the details. When my pencil drawing is done, I'll create a new layer below and using a random color, I'm going to mask the whole shape of the figure. For this, I prefer to use a brush instead of the selection tool, because I want the edges of my mask to look as natural as possible, and with the selection tool, they would look too clean and digital. When I'm done with the masking, I'll alpha lock this layer and fill it with white. Creating a new layer below the figure, I'm going to import a series of watercolor stamps that also come with the set and play with their placement in the background, rotating and moving them until I'm happy with how they look all together. Then, using different brushes with the smudge tool, I'm blending some areas between the stamps to make them look more like they were painted together. I'm also using the gradient map tool to give the stamps the colors I want for my background, based on the reference. When I'm happy with that, I'll create a new layer on top and make it a clipping mask. I'll start to paint the skin on the figure. Just like with real watercolor, the best procedure is to start painting light colors and slowly building up the midtones, leaving the darkest darks for the end. I'm also doing my best to save the whites in the same way you would do it with real watercolor on paper, like you can see in the right side of the face, the white of the eye, the highlights in the nose, etc. As I start to introduce some of the mid-tones in the skin, let me show you a little trick you're going to see me use a lot in this painting. In my latest update to the Watercolor Experience brush set, I added a few new brushes that have this double color label in their names. What is it that these brushes do? 
Well, if you select a primary color and a different secondary color, the color of your brush stroke will oscillate from one color to the other based on the pressure you apply. This is great for doing color gradients in a single stroke, and I'm sure you will find many interesting uses for it. But let me show you the most interesting use for this, in my opinion, when painting with digital watercolors. Let's say we have this bowl with this color base. Now I'm going to pick the primary color I want to use for shading the bowl, but for the secondary color I'm going to pick the same current color of the bowl. Look at what happens when I start to paint very light and I apply more and more pressure to the stroke. We get a perfect gradient or transition between the new color and the one that already was in the canvas. This is very similar to applying a brush stroke with real watercolors with a lot of pigment at first, but adding more water gradually until the pigment gets entirely diluted. Back to the painting, you'll see me use this technique everywhere. It is perfect to help you get the subtle changes in tone, light and shadow of the human flesh just right. Subtlety is one of the best things from real watercolor for me, and I'm so glad I found a natural way to translate that into these digital brushes. Additionally, I'm constantly switching between the paint tool for introducing new colors and the smudge tool to blend the new colors with the previous ones. For the lips, notice how I'm painting the details of the wrinkles, but I'm also trying to think of the negative shape that the highlights are going to leave in the middle area of the bottom lip. Here I'm working the shadows and different subtle planes of the arm and the hand and using the bleeding pen brush with the eraser tool I'm reintroducing the whites of the highlights on the top part of the fingers because I forgot to save them. That is one of the advantages of digital watercolors that you can always rectify and correct something. For the eye, I'm going to be switching between different brushes depending on how soft and how hard I need the edges to be for each part. For things like the white of the eye or the makeup in the eyelids, I'll use soft brushes like the General Brush 1 or the Bloom brush. But for details like the iris or the eyelashes, I'll use brushes with harder edges like the Watercolor Line brush and the Messy Edges brush. Using the general wash and the messy edges brushes, I'm darkening the darker parts of the neck that catch less light. Now I'm going to duplicate the mask I did for the whole figure and place it on top of the skin layer. This is going to be the layer mask for the hair, so I'm going to erase the skin areas from this layer using the wet pencil brush with the eraser tool. Then I'll create another layer on top of this one and set it up as clipping mask. This is where I'm going to paint the hair. Following the same principle as for the skin, I'll start slowly building up the colors of the hair from the lightest lights to the darkest darks. As you can see, I did my best to save the whites in the highlights of the hair this time. Let me introduce you to the big covering brush. This brush is just perfect for painting hair in watercolor with a very natural and brushy feeling. It's like an old brush with the bristles a little bit split that simulate groups of hair strands in a very loose way that I just love. I highly recommend you to try it out. Now I'm going to duplicate the mask I did for the hair 
and place it on top of the layer where I painted the hair colors. This is going to be the mask for the clothes. So I'll use the wet pencil brush again with the eraser tool to get rid of the hair area in this layer. I'll make another layer on top of this one, set it to clipping mask, and here is where I'm going to paint the clothes. For the clothes, I want to be a bit more experimental and expressive, and I think the thick splats brush is perfect for that. It will allow me to paint an interesting transition with expressive brush strokes at the bottom of my image where the colors meet the white of the canvas. This brush works great with the paint tool but also with the smudge tool, so I'll use it with both to achieve the results I want. Using the messy edges brush, I'll introduce some hard edge brush strokes to define the darker areas in the clothes, giving shape to the different wrinkles here and there. Here's a little touch I like to give to my pencil drawing at this stage. I'll make sure to have the alpha lock activated in the pencil layer and then with a soft brush like the watercolor bleeds one, I'll color the pencil lines in different places according to the specific colors of those areas, but always going a little bit darker so that the lines don't disappear entirely, but more like they blend nicely with the colors in the layers below them. At this final stage, I'm going to finalize detailing whatever is left. For example, I'll go in with the big covering and the bleeding pen brushes to paint additional brush strokes representing thinner hair strands here and there. The last thing I like to do is to create a new layer on top of everything else, including the paper texture layer. Here's where I'm going to use the bleeding pen brush to add the final highlights to specific places like the eyes and the lips and so on. I like to do this on top of the paper layer because it gives the same feeling as painting the final details with a gel pen on top of real watercolor when it is entirely dry. I'm giving a few last touches in a couple of places until I feel happy with my painting. And here it is, the finished watercolor portrait. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comment section below what other tutorials or videos you would like to see from me. I'll make sure to have your suggestions in mind. Before I go, don't forget to visit my Gumroad page, where you will find the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate and many other sets that I have available. I also have tons of freebies in there, so check them out. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.